Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Phil Irving. Thanks for the intro, Kevin. Um, we will endeavour to be slick. Uh, we haven't uh, rehearsed. Uh, so we've got just a couple, couple of few slides that we'll just walk through. Uh, so first of all, me, um, I've been living in Marlow for a couple of years now, uh, which is down the road previously, but I, I work in my spare time for the Environment Agency. Um, I was in environmental consultancy before that, so I've got quite a long history working on environmental issues. And I was really inspired actually by an article that I read in the Marlovian um, explaining that the, all the great things that Spinfield uh, School was up to um, a couple of years ago or a bit less. And um, I have three children of my own and I believe passionately uh, about the importance of all of our young people uh, in terms of, um, you know, the roles they're going to play in the future, the, the decisions that they're going to make you know, and their role in helping all of us um, save our planet, uh, to put it simply. So I decided to find out what the schools um, in and around Marlow uh, were doing. And through the spring and the summer uh, of last year, I spoke to uh, a number of head teachers and a number of teachers and indeed a number of eco-warrior groups and, and other eco-groups in, in, in our schools. And um, that was just the most inspiring process to go through. Um, and then there's been a whole load of, of stuff that's happened since then. And so what we'll do um, in the next few minutes is just talk you through that, the journey really that the schools are on um, and, you know, what might happen next. And I know some of you, uh, you know, have, have had contact with schools already and indeed are working with the schools on various um, issues. And I know others want to. Uh, and I think there's some real, real opportunity um, here. So... I'm now going to try to advance my slides. There we go. So um, this slide um, paints, um, I think, to be honest, an overly simplistic view. Um, but it, it, it's, it, it's a slide that I, I, I came up with and shared with the head teachers uh, following my conversations with all of the schools. And what it does in a very, very simple way is just set out, you know, some of the some of the activity that's ongoing. Um, the size of the font uh, on the slide and indeed the size of the green blobs um, is, is a very, very um, crude way, I think, of showing, you know, how much activity, you know, is going on in each of these areas. So obviously lots of education, you know, eco groups in lots of schools, lots of, um, lots of focus on recycling and reducing plastic, you know, gardening clubs, forest schools, you know, walking to school, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, so, some schools on the eco schools uh, pathway. Um, are, you know, our friends in Sandy Gate are, are, a, green, are a green flag eco school, which is fantastic. Um, Spinfield um, plastic free schools, St Peter's are going for that at the moment as well, um, and some other you know awards out there as well. I won't dwell on it, but just um, you know, I can share the detail with you or with anybody who's interested. But lots and lots going on, uh, so that was great. Um, but almost all of that activity was happening within schools. Um, so Spinfield, um, on the back of their um, fantastic work, led really passionately by both the head teacher and um, Sue um, Armstrong, um, launched a pledge initiative um, last year, and they got all of the children to to take home a list of ten pledges. You can see some of them just across the bottom of this slide. So turning the tap off when I clean my teeth, taking a shower rather than the bath reusing and recycling that sort of stuff um, and they gathered lots of pledges within the school and then they widened it to a number of other primaries um, and got over 1600 pledges made by by primary um, students and i'm told that you know checking in is happening and that they're all making progress with their pledges um, but back in um, december jocelyn and i uh, went along uh, to Spinfield with representatives from all of those primary schools and you can see them in the photo there um, to hear all about what they've been doing and it was just phenomenal that you know the, the the understanding and the passion amongst the children was was lovely to see some very young children you know happy to stand up or to speak up in front of in front of the group which was great and they as a group committed to two specific actions one um, was Waste Free Wednesday, the idea being that children are challenged to not bring any waste to school in their lunch boxes on those days. 
and the schools all went away and started um, to do that, uh, obviously prior mm. to lockdown. Uh, and they also, the children also decided that they wanted to create certificates to give out to shops um, in Marlow um, that don't give away plastic bags. Uh, and I know they've come up with some designs, um, you know, and, you know, the challenge is, you know, what we, you know, what we do with those um, as we move forward. So I think that that's a really nice example of, 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 you know, work going on across, you know, a number of schools. Um, which is really, you know, helping them all to make progress, to share their ideas, you know, and to start to work together on some, uh, some common endeavour. Uh, this next slide then is where I hand back over to, to Kevin, because, you know, under Kevin's leadership, the head teachers decided to really take it up a notch. Kevin, over to you, you can explain. Thanks, Phil. So um, the idea of the Eco Conference came from one of our regular Marlowe Schools head teachers meetings, uh, which Jocelyn and Phil attended, which was really to talk about the, the work of Marlowe Town Council and the other groups uh, working on environment projects within Marlowe, specifically within Marlowe, um, and to build on, on Phil's work in terms of the audit that he had done with the primary schools to look at the, the projects and the activities that they were doing um, from an eco-friendly perspective already in those schools. Um, so from his audit and our discussions at the meeting, it was very clear that there was already quite a bit of work going on in schools, uh, but the schools were all at different stages uh, and in a number of cases running very different projects. Um, there was a number of schools on Phil's last slide there, but we're talking about 11 schools in total that sits within the Marlowe Liaison Group, which includes the two secondary schools, which you see were, were missing from that slide. Um, to hold the conference, I think that was my idea, and when you, you're in a, in a meeting with head teachers and you come up with an idea of holding a, a hosting and ho or holding a conference for 11 schools, all of the head teachers in the room at that time looked towards me and said, Kevin, yes, that would be a wonderful idea, great, thank you for volunteering to do that. So um, having said that, I had to take up the, the baton and, and take that forward. So with Phil's support, we, we've discussed and looked at what that conference might look like. My idea was to, uh, to mirror the, the high profile worldwide conferences that, that world leaders go to and, and talk about the things that they're gonna pledge, the things that they're gonna commit to do in order to positively impact and influence climate change. So rather than taking 150, 160 children to Mauritius for a, for, a, for a week for one of these conferences, we thought we'd host it in, in Great Marlow School's Sixth Form Centre and uh, they wouldn't mind that that was the case, I'm sure. Um, so the, the focus of that conference was to bring together key parties, organisations, local people across the age ranges, uh, looking specifically at, at what's going on in terms of environment and, and eco challenges and changes uh, within Marlow Town. For the schools, it would be an opportunity for um, a next step approach for those schools that already had well-established eco-environment student groups uh, and a chance perhaps for some of them to reinvigorate those groups and for other schools that, that really didn't have an established uh, eco-environment group of students that they had something to focus on and work towards. Um, from a secondary perspective, particularly, I think children at secondary school level have a have an understanding of uh, worldwide issues, deforestation, rising sea, sea levels, destruction of barrier reefs, etc. But were less familiar uh, with environment issues within their local towns and communities, which was in stark contrast to the primary schools, which was quite evident from, from Phil's work that they were far more in touch with the things that they could do uh, at a local level. So um, a key part of it for me was was a connection between uh, primary school children, secondary school children together, um, but also building relationships and understanding in those children of what they can do in their local community um, so that they could interact and engage with uh, community groups that were already established and perhaps they would then become our, our next group of community volunteers for our next group of community environment groups and future groups, which most of you on here uh, our leaders in at this time. Uh, coming back to the schools themselves, uh, the conference for the school children was going to be, uh, for the school children was going to be an opportunity for the schools to sh share best practice um, from their own schools, to pick up ideas and, and best practice from other schools. It would also be a chance for 
for school leaders and, and teachers to come together at the conference um, to share their ideas, their understanding, their challenges, and, and perhaps ways that they could overcome those challenges. Uh, in the lead up to the conference, all the schools had been involved in, in building on that early pledge work that, that Springfield had led, led on, um, so sharing their ideas about their uh, uh, environmentally friendly activities, programs, and looking at some targets that we could, we could set for all schools that would attend the conference, um, which would be a clear shared focus then for, for all the schools in Marlow um, about the things that they were going to pledge to commit to do uh, over the next few months, over the next, uh, over the next year potentially. Also, as part of that, to give a little bit of friendly competition, there's no harm in that between the schools um, to have some competition and, and challenge to spur each other's on. Uh, a spin-off probably out of the conference uh, in terms of the, the groups that we had. There wasn't just only local groups. We had a couple of uh, uh, national groups in terms of Innovate and EcoClean that were involved, who were companies that provide catering services and cleaning services uh, to schools. So collectively, we'd be able to bring some pressure to bear on, on those organisations to look at their existing practice and how they could improve their environmentally friendly credentials and also the schools at the same time. Unfortunately, uh, with the majority of the work completed and the arrangements in place, uh, coronavirus forced the postponement of the conference, uh, but we are certainly committed to rescheduling it when it is safe to do so. Um, so Phil, if you can move on to the next slide. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so um, the next slide brings us up to date, right up to date where we are at the moment because this is a, an environment challenge that has been shared um, across schools in Marlow this week and over the course of next week will continue to be so. It's a collaborative environment challenge where all students from all schools have been or will be challenged uh, early part of, that next, of next week to design, to design their future for Marlow uh, as a far more sustainable and environmentally friendly town. Uh, we're particularly asking in this challenge uh, for children to draw on their experiences at the beginning of lockdown when, when lives were being lived very, very differently and how this can be, uh, give them some inspiration uh, for what the future uh, uh, of Marlow may look like if those opportunities arise again. Um, final slide, Phil. Moving forward, as it states, um, environmental education and activities will continue to be a, a key part of schools' works. Uh, we're very keen to draw on the local expertise and knowledge to support this education. Um, so this evening is perfect for that opportunity. Uh, the Eco Conference itself will be rescheduled. Um, it's become a bit of a common theme that all major events uh, have been rescheduled for almost one year on from, from the point of postponement. So we could well be looking at the in and around the 26th of March, 2021 uh, for the rescheduled uh, eco-conference. Um, and as we move into the new academic year, um, schools are always keen for community groups to, to come in to be part of our assembly programs, uh, curriculum time activities, and to support our extracurricular provision. Uh, we're not entirely sure what September is going to look like for schools, but hopefully, hopefully we will be able to open our doors to external speakers, pre presenters, collaborators, even if that's not physically open the doors. Uh, we, we've all uh, discovered the one, wonders of modern technology and you can, what you can do with uh, video conferencing facilities over the last few months. So um, thank you very much. <laughs>